of these three basketball players, who is the most skilled? Now, I'm gonna change the question a bit. Of these three basketball players, who is the best? Now, I will change the question again. Of these three basketball players, who is the greatest? Now, some of you probably think I'm going insane and running out of ideas for content and pretty much just said the exact same thing three times in a row. However, this video will be going over the difference between these three questions and why it's important to distinguish between them in the context of the NBA. Now, this whole video is basically going to be based around these three words, skill, better, and greater. Now first, let's break down what these three words mean in the context of this discussion so that you understand the difference. First, we'll start with skill. Skill is the most narrow of these words. The way I would distinguish a player's skill, is this is going to sound like a 2k sim challenge, is if everyone played one on one and were the same height and weight. That is how you would figure out the most skilled NBA player. Now obviously we can't do it in real life, but we can kind of infer. Players like Shaq and Rudy Gobert would not be as good, and players like Harden and Kyrie would win a lot. Now I'm not going to be like James Harden saying anyone would have no skill. Sure, being 7 feet tall helps, but it's not like you could get any random 7 foot tall person and expect them to be dunking from the free throw line. Speaking of dunking from the free throw line, I would consider athleticism a skill and therefore going under the skilled category. Basically, if you can get better at it, it's a skill. You can get better at 3 point shooting, so it's a skill. You can get better at jumping, so it's a skill. You can't get taller, so that wouldn't count as a skill. You can't, in theory, control how good your teammates are, so that's not a skill. Something like strength is somewhat of a gray area, as you obviously can get stronger, but size does play a big role in how strong you will be relative to others. I will also say defense isn't a big factor when talking about skill. It is somewhat of a factor, as there is skill in defense, but a big part of defense is size and strength, as well as effort. So now you know what most people mean when they say Prime Harden was one of the most skilled players ever. Now, what does it mean when we say a player is better? Better is much more based on production. This is like if every player just played a straight up one-on-one. -on -one. For this one, we'll do a player comparison, Shaquille O'Neal and Joel Embiid. I would say that Embiid is a more skilled basketball player. He can shoot much better than Shaq, has better handles, and has comparable post moves. However, I would hope that nobody watching this video thinks that Joel Embiid is a better basketball player than Shaq. Shaq mostly relies on his size and post moves to produce points. Not to say that didn't take a lot of skill, but Shaq never expanded to have any sort of shot or handle. This doesn't matter, partially because of the era. But also a big part of this is the fact that he was so good of a post scorer, he didn't need a jumper to be more productive than Embiid. Embiid's game may look more skillful and aesthetically pleasing, but there is no denying that Shaq was more productive. Another player comparison is Prime Harden and Giannis. Now Harden did get clowned when he said this, but I do see his point of view. Harden has handles, is a better shooter, and can finish at the rim. Giannis has worked up to improve his shooting, but he's still not a good shooter, and it's not like Giannis has ever really been a risk to cross someone badly, but it doesn't matter when we're talking about who's better. Giannis is more productive and efficient, and we're not even going to talk about defensive difference. Giannis does rely on his length a lot, but that's because he has it and can capitalize on it. Going back to the one-on-one -on -one analogy, if they were both 6'5", Harden would win, but in reality, Giannis is 6'11", and would probably beat Harden one-on-one, -on -one, making him better. Basically, skill is about the depth of your bag and the amount of ways you can produce, but being better is about the total production a player provides, regardless of variety or reliance on natural forces, because at the end of the day, a bucket is a bucket. Now for the top tier word and the one that we use most often to rank players, greatness. Greatness takes the things we've talked about and adds many other things onto it. I would say that skill makes up a small portion of greatness, but at the end of the day, being better will benefit your greatness more than being more skilled. Then there are things like accolades. Accolades aren't generally a huge deal as most of the time a better player will accumulate more accol accolades, but accolades can help when comparing across eras. While we can't agree that the competition in the 1970s wasn't as good, Kareem's MVPs are still valuable as it shows that he was the best player at the time. Winning also plays a massive factor in greatness. There are tons of good players around the league, but great players are the ones who elevate their teams to become winners. KD is a better player than Steph Curry, seeing as he is a 7 foot guard. But Steph Curry is much greater, as Steph has won two chips without Durant. Winning is also another way, great way to compare across eras. Again, teams might not have been as good in the 80s, being the best player on the best team is a big deal no matter when it happened. So now we know what these words mean in the context of the NBA, but now the question is, why do I find this important? Well here's the reason that I made this video. Eras. Players from past eras often get their greatness tainted because their competition was worse. Things like Wilt Chamberlain's 50 point per game season and Bill's 11 rings are often totally written off like they never even happened because they happened in a different era. Now I'm not saying that Wilt would average 50 today, but Wilt is still one of the greatest players to ever play. This also happens with big men like Shaq and Kareem, where people insult their lack of a 3 point shot. People try to analyze these players like they play today, but they don't. 
Why would Shaq and Kareem spend so much time working on a three-point shot when clearly being a good post player was working just fine for them? There's no doubt that someone like Embiid has more skill, or someone like Giannis would outrun and jump them, but their era did not call for these things. If Shaq had grown up today, he would have learned to shoot the three ball, like every kid. If Wilt had grown up today, he would have adjusted to the competition and still been really good because he is 7 feet tall and can touch the top of the backboard. We act like when we compare the greatness of players, we're getting them in a time machine and dropping them back into the modern NBA. Now again, Bill and Wilt aren't doing what they did back then today, but they would find a way to adjust and be great even if they don't win 11 rings. By today's standards even, Larry Bird shooting 38% from 3 on 2 attempts per game is not that good, but he's still an all-time great shooter. Even average players like Brook Lopez adjusted from being a non-shooter to stretch bigs as the three-point game popularity, and there's no reason to say Larry Bird would not do the same. So when finding out how great a player is, there must be balance. On one hand, you have to acknowledge the fact that the competition has gotten tougher, role players are more diverse than ever, and nobody will average 50 points per game. However, on the other hand, greatness will find a way to show in any era of basketball. It might not be to the same extent, but there is no doubt in my mind that if Will and Bill were reborn today, they would have no trouble being amazing basketball players. So as we learned today, skill can be important, but it really comes down to your production and how that production helps you win basketball games. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe and check out the video on the screen about one of the players I talked about quite a bit today, the late, great Bill Russell. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Peace out.